Gary Steingart, the author of Super Sad True Love Story. Gary, your book supposedly takes place in the future, but of course it really takes place in the present. Your book is a polemic about contemporary American life. What are you saying about how people should change their lives in this book? What is your polemic in this book? I'm a little worried about uh, offering advice for as a writer to come on and say, well, I think you should live life this way. Um, Tolstoy was probably the best Russian writer. When he wrote War and Peace and Anna Karenina, there was nothing that he couldn't do as a writer. And in his later years, he began writing these polemics about how life should be led. Um, he had his own brand of Christianity, and he had many adherents who came to his estate outside of Moscow and who tried to live the way he lived. But what happened was that his writing actually became fairly insufferable. I mean, it's very hard to read stuff that was written in that period because it's mostly thou shalt and thou shalt not kind of commands. And I really don't think a writer should do that. What I offer a reader who's interested in reading my works is more of a kind of journalistic enterprise. I mean, I'm very cognizant of the world around me, I hope, and, and, and of some of the people that live in it. And I want to convey that experience of what it's like to be alive right now, even if I'm writing about the future, what it's like to be alive right now, and to have the reader make her own decisions about what she thinks she can change in her life. You know, if, if a reader finishes my book and says, wow, I really don't spend enough time alone, I really don't spend enough time walking down the street without checking my email on my iPhone, uh, maybe that's good, you know, but that's not necessarily what I need the reader to take away from my books. Um, let, let the reader find what they want and then, and then hopefully use it to, to, to make their life better. And if not, then hopefully the book will just entertain them because I also believe that fiction, even when it's branded literary fiction, uh, should be enjoyable because I grew up reading books the way, you know, people play video games now. For me, I couldn't believe the next, turn of, uh, the next turn of events in the books. I couldn't believe what these characters were doing. Uh, and I was so excited to pick up a new book every, every few days. But the book must be designed to be shocking, particularly to a Facebook generation. Well, you know, it's, it's very hard to shock without using images. It's very hard to shock by just using words alone because I think words have in some ways lost their power. And one of the ways they've lost their power is because everyone produces an endless torrent of information day and night. We are all, in a sense, producers of words and also images whenever we snap a photo and then put it up online. So, in a sense, the language has been devalued because everyone is a practitioner of it, um, an endless practitioner of it. And so what I always urge is, and what I try to do myself, is not to write or speak all the time, but rather to read or watch good films and just to take my mind away from the idea that I constantly have to be on, that I constantly have to be producing something for any kind of audience, whether it's a book audience or a Facebook audience or anyone else. Um, this is the tough part, is to actually turn oneself off and to allow for this kind of very strange introspection where you actually enter the mind of another human being through a book, through a film, uh, and you develop a sense of empathy for a life that's very different from your own. I'm guessing that there's been a lot of interest in the movie industry about this book, turning it into a movie. Uh, have the book rights been sold? No, it's very hard to do a thing like this uh, because I think it requires many millions of dollars, dozens, tens of millions of dollars to capture the future the way it's portrayed in the book. So uh, people have been interested, but I think uh, people are treading very gingerly in toward making it a movie. What's next? Are you working on another book? I'm working on another book. Uh, I'm also working on an HBO series about Queens, uh, which is set in the present day and involves a lot of the immigrant groups in Queens. And I'm working on a memoir. <laughs> I'm going to be 40 next year. so. Uh, in the Russian life expectancy for men is 56, so I have another 16 years to make this happen. Uh, so I'm already starting to write down the old memoir. And for people on uh, watching this who want to contact you, should they follow you on Facebook? Should they email you? Oh, yes. You? Follow me on Facebook, please. Uh, all the docs and pictures you would ever want. Well, I want to thank you so much. This has been a wonderful interview, and I, want to, I wish you'd brought Felix into the studio. Next time we do an interview, maybe bring him in. Absolutely. He's very camera ready. <laughs>